What's up, guys? Zade here with another video for you. The other day, well, I, I recorded it today, but I probably uploaded it a few days before this one goes out. I did a deck profile going over this guy's list. I got 11th at a regional playing Cash Tira, and I was play testing his deck to try to test this deck and learn more about it. That way, I'm ready for Photon Hypernova. And while testing it, I had an idea, right? So currently. The deck does not have enough extenders and stuff until we get the support. Like, the archetype doesn't have much of a backbone. And so people are just playing level 7 extenders. And it's already kind of a going second deck. So I was like, what are level 7 extenders that give me engine on their own? Because there's a lot of times where, like, if you open four going second cards and an astral Karibo, you're not really going anywhere. And so I realized that there's two level 7 mech knights. And they're both searchable off of Blue Sky and Purple Nightfall, which means... In theory, all eight of these are level seven extenders, but they give you access to Nightfall, who is like just a recurring engine. He's going to keep coming back every turn. So if you were to open Nightfall for going second cards, or were to open Blue Sky for going second cards, you're going to get a Nightfall in rotation every turn, which is kind of important in decks like this. It's a, the reason why I think like the Fenrir is good. Like, it's why the Cash Tira cards are good. You special Fenrir, use its effect to search for Unicorn. Now, if that's the only play you had, so you had that in foregoing second cards, you still, like, have a formidable board because the Fenrir is going to trade with the card and you have follow-up plus your going second cards probably traded. And so, this list, by the way, this is with a lot of going second board breakers, but I think this list might be better with hand traps. I'm not sure yet. The problem is that hand traps can't be set in the spell trap zone to make the mech knights live so the board breakers feel a little better but if you open like three board breakers two combo pieces right and you use two board breakers to break their board and then you start comboing your two combo pieces that last board breaker is not going to do anything till the full rotation of turns whereas if it was a hand trap it can trade with something there's also like i was testing around with bestials you could play bestials too and then put in a level six mech knight and then like, if you open Bistials with Mech Knights, you can make rank sixes. But if you open Cash Tears with Mech Knights, you can make sevens. Like, th I think this opens a lot to be explored. But I'm, I'm going to get into the list now. Triple Fenrir, Triple Unicorn. These two are staple at three because they're, like, the only two good ones. Ogre. The list that I net decked and was tested before played two. I think Ogre is kind of dog shit to draw. Like, the only you want to play one because you want the name. That way, if you ever need it, you have it. But... You don't really want to be opening this card. You just kind of want to tutor it when there's nothing left to tutor, I think. I only play two cash tier of birth. I don't understand why this card would be a three of because, like, you search it off Unicorn the one time and you have it the rest of the game. And you want to have one more to, like, have access to in case they were to out it. Or if you were to Zeus your board or something. But you don't really want to be playing three, in my opinion, because I don't want to open it. There's not enough cash tiers to justify wanting to open this card, in my opinion. Then, uh... The one Panker Tops, I still think Panker Tops is really cool. It's basically another Cash Tira, but you could like special it, MST a card, and then special. It's just MST that can also be a level 7 extender. Then for the Mech Knights, triple blue, triple purple, one yellow, one red. Yellow and red, both like one banishes to pop spells, one banishes to pop monsters. And they're both level 7s. Some things to note too is like if your opponent has a column where they have two cards in the column, you special blue, you can grab both level 7s. And now if you're able to special them both, just blue turned into the uh, the Shangri Era, which is going to give you, over time, full cash tier line. And so I think that's kind of sick. There's a case, I think, to cut blue to 2, maybe, and play 3-2-1-1. But I was liking this for now. I kind of already explained why I like these cards, too, so I'm not going to go too much into them. Next, we got a 2 Dark Ruler No More, Triple Shifter. I'm, I'm going to cover the other hard-going second cards before I talk about these ones. So, Triple Shifter, Dark Hole, Triple Evenly, Triple Lightning Storm, and a Feather Duster. Since this list isn't playing Bistials, I get access to the Lightning Storm, and I really like Lightning Storm. Also, Bistials don't synergize well with Evenly. The, the Bistials are so good and so bad. Like, they're, they're some of the most powerful cards, but they don't synergize well with a lot of other cards in the game. Also, weirdly, I haven't been playing a lot of tier on Dueling Book, so... On here, it's been annoying playing them, but you know how it be sometimes. Um, the going second package, like I said, I feel like it could maybe just be hand traps, but I'd have to fuck around with it. And then I play triple, triple tactic, triple sacred swords, and an upstart. reason I'm playing these, like the seven swords and like upstarts instead of playing prosperity is just because I think I like seven stars a lot more. 
but it's weird, right? So they're almost you're going second. They're like always using a monster effect going second. So this is almost always able to be pot of greed. The snatch deal is not that powerful in this deck, and going second looking at the hand isn't as good. So I just like to draw the most, and that had like negative synergy with prosperity. But then Sacred Sword of Seven Star is also a combo piece. Because, like, say you open Fenrir, Fenrir is not that much on its own, but with seven stars, it's a combo. Because you special Fenrir, search Unicorn, seven star, banish Fenrir, draw two, special Unicorn, because you have no monsters again. Unicorn, grab spell, play spell, spell, bring back the banished Fenrir. And so, it, like, turns this into, like, a crazy combo. It also, you can, the Mech Knights are effectively level sevens, because they're going to search you level sevens that you could use, too. So you play 7, 14, 15, 16 level 7 monsters. This isn't going to be dead that often. Plus, like, these cards can be set in columns to turn on mech knights and then flip later. Just, it's, they're cool. They're cool. Side deck is just shit that uh, might be worth testing. Um, only card I want to go over in it is this card. Because uh, it out to tier element effect in Grave. I don't know how relevant that is. Because for two level 7s, you probably want to be getting more value. But I thought this was cool. So I'll read it to you guys. Number 76, Harmonizer Grid Gridealy. Oh, one sec. My RuneScape guy finished fishing. Quick uh, Easter egg for those watching. I'm doing some fishing on my Iron Man while I record. <laughs> but um, so this card says, this card's attribute is treated as each of its attached materials. So it's typically going to be earth, wind, or light. I don't know if that's going to matter, actually. Cannot be destroyed by battle with a monster with the same attribute. Also cannot be destroyed by the activated effects of your opponent's monsters with the same attribute. And then quick effects, target one monster in your opponent's graveyard, detach one material from this card, and if you do attach to this card, attach that card to this card as material. So if your opponent activates a tier element in grave, you detach, target the tier element, and attach the tier element to this. So now the tier won't resolve, and it becomes dark, so now it's unaffected by your opponent's dark cards, basically. So I thought that was an interesting card to take note of. I don't necessarily... Oh, shit. I, well, on RuneScape, I accidentally clicked on a button. But, uh... Yeah, I don't really think that it's meta-defining or anything, but I thought it'd be cool to talk about. And then, so we got, in the actual extra deck, Titanic Moth, Big Eye, one uh, Diablos the Mind Hacker, two Keshtira, Shenry Era, the three Charmers, Light, Dark, Earth, Elf, Gigantic, so that the Charmers can turn into it. Charmer, for any name, make Elf. Elf, if they control a monster, bring back the Charmer, overlay Gigantic, Gigantic Attack, make Zeus. That's like the line that I'm playing these for. This is more Zeus targets. And then I talked about this in a different video, the Draco Sack with uh, Link Spider, Phoenix. And then I have an IP. Honestly, I've been wanting to take IP out, and I think I'm going to do it right now for Unicorn. That way, uh, when you um, go Draco Sack, you go Link Spider, Phoenix, pop a back row, draw a card, Unicorn, spin a card. And it's just like a lot of removal. And so, yeah, that's the list. I don't have too, too, too much more to say on it. I've been enjoying testing it, but again, I don't think it's crazy. Like the the archetype definitely needs Photon Hypernova to come out for us to be able to like break it, but it has been fun to experiment with until then. But if you guys have any other ideas on how to play it, or if you have any ideas on how to make this particular list better, let me know. And thank you for watching.